What's up everyone? I'm Brandon, this is Be The Consumer, and I'm going over what we have for Tesla. We have the autopilot, enhanced autopilot, full self-drive. I got them one by one. I just had the regular autopilot for about nine months before we finally decided and it was available to get the full self-drive. But before we got the full self-drive, we got enhanced autopilot for a trip up to LA. So I got a good experience with all three of them and it's not like I had you know all the different versions of the full self-drive and now I can tell you which is better and you know which version is upgraded what but I think it gives you a better perspective sometimes to just say yes or no on the full self-drive at this point or yes or no on the enhanced autopilot and at the end I'm gonna give you my favorite feature which is in the enhanced autopilot and a decision on why I would stick with one or the other so stick around but let's get into this make sure to smash the like button subscribe and all that and I'm gonna start you here with just the autopilot. So all the Teslas come with adaptive cruise control and autopilot, where you can click down once on this stick here and it'll take you into cruise control. And the difference between this cruise control and many others is that this will actually keep you from bumping into the cars in front of you. So I've actually used the cruise control alone on a drive where I was going up and down the highway and found it to be pretty cool. It will stop you all the way down to zero and it'll go all the way up to back to the max speed with no issues. Um, and that's cool, it's much better than the regular cruise control where you know it just goes one speed and you'd run right into a car if you didn't uh, slow down yourself. But of course, it's better if you can also stay in your lane because once you have the opportunity to stay at the same speed and know what's going on with traffic in front of you, then why wouldn't you wanna have it keep you in the lane as well? So that's where you get the autopilot, you double click on that stock and now you're in your lane, it won't deviate for the most part and now it will go faster and slower based on how fast the traffic's going in front of you. With the regular autopilot, you have blue line on each side of your lane, basically telling you it's gonna keep you in your lane, it's gonna keep you from bumping into another car, and you can increase the speed with this little, uh, little dial right here on the Y and the three, and if you have an extra S and you get the actual steering wheel, I think it's similar. I'm not exactly sure how this all works on the yoke. Um, you know, you do have the screen here, but I actually don't mind having the screen on the right and the navigation because I kind of feel like I'm only looking at one spot. Now, obviously, I'd love to have the screen here. Don't get me wrong. If I had that screen on the S or the X, I'd probably just look at that the whole time and I wouldn't necessarily need the map over here because all your different controls or all your different directions are right here. Um, but to be honest, it's pretty cool that you can get this with the regular car. You don't have to pay any extra for this. This is the autopilot, keeps you in your lane, keeps you from hitting other cars. It is a little scary sometimes on the highway, especially if you're in like the left lane and you know those uh, barriers are tight to the line and you have to, uh, you're gonna be real close to them sometimes or if you're coming up on a semi, it doesn't seem like it always tries to kind of move you, you know, to the opposite side of the lane if there's something into your lane. Uh, if it comes in your lane too far, it'll definitely slow down and kind of scare you. But for the most part, autopilot on the highway is very nice. Um, it's lacking one good feature though, which is, if I want to change lanes right now, I don't really have a great option. Um, and before it was even worse because if I would put my blinker on and I would break the steering wheel just to get out of the autopilot and then I would start drifting into the left lane, it would beep at me very loudly and say, you know, take control of the wheel immediately, which is a sign that I'm not, you know, doing what I'm supposed to. But now at least when I put my blinker on and in regular autopilot, I, it makes it actually easier to break the steering wheel. There's a noticeable difference. It's easier and it lets it go a little sooner and then it does not beep any longer. Now, if you're to go over two lanes and I put my right blinker on, break it, move over one lane and then keep moving over a second lane, it will beep the second time and think that I'm drifting out of the second lane that I was supposed to be in, even if I have the blinker on the whole time. So, you know, for the most part, very happy with this. Let's go ahead and press the left blinker. I'm gonna break and I'm gonna go in this left lane and then I can double click back on autopilot and then it'll resume back up to the speed. You can put a little bit more gas on there. It'll probably prompt me to make sure my hands are on the wheel. But for the most part, this is sufficient for driving on highways, especially since it fixed that part where when you put your blinker on, you have to then break the wheel, move over. It was a little hairy when it would be because it would wake up my wife if she's taking a nap on a trip or something. It would just kind of scare the crap out of everyone in the car. So not too bad. Now I'm gonna put my right blinker on and I'm gonna brake. So no beeping. There you go, back in the lane and then I gotta re-engage the autopilot. So that's what everybody gets free with the car. So now we get to enhanced autopilot, which I think is a lot better for one reason. And that is because 
it does auto lane changing for you. So this is the function that at the time of filming this video cost $6,000. Um, versus the $15,000 of full self-drive, but I think it's worth it, and I'm gonna tell you why. So I'm gonna actually hit on here that I'm gonna go home, and now you have this little guy down here for enhanced autopilot that tells you you can click on that, and now it's gonna go, and it's going to get me back home, and now it's gotta make a, a various moves here to get there. But the first one is auto lane changing. It does need you to confirm, but now I no longer have to break the steering wheel, I don't have to think about it, all I have to do is actually click on the, the blinker and then it's going to move over into the lane when it's safe to do so. And that can be a huge benefit, especially if you're a cruise control user, someone that likes to just keep going on the highway at one speed. Having the enhanced autopilot is great because all you need to do is change from left lane to right lane. You don't have to break the steering wheel. You don't have to really think about it. It does all the work for you and it's not gonna let you get into an accident because it's not gonna go over until you either confirm, and even if you confirm, it's not gonna let you move over into the lane until it's safe. As you can see, we have, uh, you know, it says that there's someone in the lane, and so it's red, it's not gonna let me go and do that until, there you go, no one's in the lane, so it lets me move over, and now I'm, I'm back on, and I'm going the way I'm supposed to. So I switched lanes, the car behind me is not happy that I'm only increasing my speed this much, so they're zooming past me, probably angry that I pulled out in front of them but didn't go any faster. And you know that's kind of one thing is that it's got to keep its distance from this car. Why is it still telling me to change lanes again? I think it's the speed based that I had. I thought I had off. So this is the reason why I just turn the speed based off. Well, actually, it is disabled. So there's really no reason for it to be telling me to get in the left lane because I'm going straight. I'm not going too slow. I'm in the lane I want to go in. There's no reason to get in the left lane. No reason at all. The only reason I could think is if it thinks that being in the HOV lane would be faster, but I, I've been in like this situation where it's just me by myself and I don't have the little stickers I need in order to be there. So I, that's my only reason that I could think that it wants me to keep going in the left lane. I mean, we got 10 miles straight here. Keep going in the left lane and it, it keeps thinking and telling you and it, it's not gonna quit. It just keeps wanting me to go in the left lane. So that's the only issue that I have with the enhanced autopilot. And it also happens with the full self drive because again, they're saying on the highway, but this constant desire to move into a lane. And the problem is, is it blocks my view of the camera because I have the actual rear view camera on when I change lanes, which is very useful when you wanna put your blinker on and move a lane. But if you're trying to go straight and it keeps telling you that you wanna move over left, move over left, move over left. I mean, it's just, it's a little bit frustrating. Now, as I said before, we didn't have the full self drive ahead of time so i actually had to buy it and so we just you know anybody can do this now that has a tesla if you go into your menu setup and you go into the autopilot basically you just have to swipe to the right on the enhanced or purchase full self drive it does give you the the price point and there you go and when i did that i wasn't certain what was going to happen i figured i would have to get a software update or something or maybe it would take a few days for them to approve this, but definitely both. So first it did do an, a software update, which got me the enhanced autopilot, which I thought was the whole full self drive and everything. But then after I had that and went on the road, I realized that it was not, you know, driving around in the cities. It was only driving around uh, just on the highways with the ability to switch lanes on the highway. Um, but of course it did have to approve me for the full self drive, which I think is an easier process now. I think before you would have to purchase it. You weren't sure if you were gonna get it. Um, and then they would download it to some people, but now it's available for anyone that wants to pay the money and has a decent score for driving. So after we had our first uh, drive up to LA and back, then the following weekend, the full self drive became activated. And then I got to see how the map changed. When you get off of the highway, it changes the map quite a bit and you see much more, you know, dynamic map going on with the turns and all the different things. So enhanced autopilot does come with the ability to change lanes automatically. It does come with the auto park and the summon. I tried the summon, it did not work. It kind of just stuck my car in the middle of nowhere. Um, to be honest, I didn't get the enhanced autopilot for those features. So, you know, if those work for you or if they're beneficial, then there you go. I know some people will do that to get in and out of their garage, you know, if they're not comfortable or if they have a very tight fit in the garage, some people use that but that's not something that I would get it for. I basically got it for the ability to maneuver around the highway and then the full self-drive for the ability to maneuver around the city streets, which I'll show you in a bit. 
so on full self drive, we'll go to the mall here because there was a situation where it kind of threw me for a loop. And that's something I want to show you because it's not that it just doesn't do what it's supposed to, but sometimes it can just make you very nervous on its way to doing that. Or sometimes it just makes a mistake and you have to take over. So I'm going to engage the autopilot here, double click and let Jesus take the wheel. So when I clicked, it said 47. I was going 47 when I clicked it. Normally it'll start at the speed limit, but the cool thing about this is you can just flick up and it'll go five at a time. So now we're gonna be going five over. And if you wanna go 10 over, just flick it again, or you can go individually up and down one at a time. But when you're on longer straight roads, not such a big deal. The only issues that you may have is that sometimes you get phantom braking where the road might think that this, you know, under, underpass here the the shadow area might be you know something that needs to stop for so you'll get some weird phantom braking and another thing is it's kind of like odd to let go of the wheel especially when the car is taking you which you think might be toward the curb a little bit more than staying in the middle of the road or middle of your lane so it's a little odd it also has a tendency to brake too fast and then speed up too fast like i would be slowing down right now but it's going a little harder and then all of a sudden it slows down, but it wasn't too bad, it wasn't too bad. And then it makes you, you know, again, you have to touch the wheel occasionally or turn the volume up or down just to make sure that you're awake. So the tricky part is coming up here and making this left. Uh, last time we were in the right lane of two lanes turning left and it almost ran us into the center console. So we'll have to see which lane it puts us in. This time it's going to the left lane. I think I'm gonna switch actually and stay in the right lane just to see if it does it again. So now I re-engaged the autopilot and we're gonna stay in this right lane of two lanes turning left and see how it handles it. And then the weird thing is sometimes it'll make you like touch the wheel right during a turn, which is also annoying. Okay, so we're going, here we go. And yeah, that's what it did last time, except it did it even worse than that. So that's an example where you know, I'm not really sure what it's following. That is not a normal turn. And I think you'd fail your driver's test if you did a turn like that. What do you think? Yeah, that wasn't the best. So, I mean, Eric's been in the car oh, where we've done some pretty straightforward things and he thought it was good, but okay, it's not gonna take over during this. Okay. Now we're gonna go back into full self-drive and give it a second chance. So now we're at 25. So again, you'll notice you gotta increase the speed sometimes otherwise you're going to be going the speed limit so this is a difficult one a lot of construction here going through a yellow light not too bad actually and that was a pretty good turn so as you can see a lot of time it'll be fine sometimes it's definitely not fine and the point is is are you willing to be nervous while you're driving are you willing to have other people in the car be a little bit nervous or wonder what's going on the hard braking, the fast acceleration, kind of the odd behaviors, but more like a student driver and doesn't always come out perfectly. There are times though where it's just nice not to have to, to drive yourself. So that switched lanes nicely and we're going pretty good. I can speed up a little if I want to, but normally on these straight paths, normally on the highways, it's all good. So we got a red light. I noticed it a little earlier, but I wouldn't have necessarily stopped, but it's stopping pretty well here. Switching lanes, it's looking to the side. I have the nice camera view there where it, you know, I can see what's behind me too, or beside me, behind me. Uh, now, one of the things with the full self drive that I think MKBHD noticed as well is that when you put in certain things on the map, I mean, it's just gonna stop there. It's just gonna stop at the entrance and it's gonna be done. And in this case, it might make a right into the mall and then it's gonna be done. So it's not necessarily taking us all the way into the parking lot. If you maybe put the Fashion Valley Mall parking lot, maybe it would, but that's you know not getting us all the way into a parking spot, which isn't the end of the world. I can take over and also when it's that tight and there's people walking and cars going everywhere inside of a parking lot, maybe it's better that you take over the rest of the way yourself anyways. But let's see where it takes us here. Yeah, this, so right here is the actual entrance. I did just type in Fashion Valley, which technically I believe is this mall, but that's not the entrance that people would use. Normally people would turn in here. This is sort of the main entrance. So it's kind of weird that it's not turning in here. But like, you know, let's go over there. Oh, ooh, let's see. Tesla doesn't like this. Look at those two blue cars. Those blue cars are in our way. 
I like that. It identified people in our way, even though we had a green light. Not too bad. Let's see what it does here. Is it going to end guidance or is it going to turn first? All right, so we turned in, we're at the mall, and now it just ends guidance right here at the front of the mall, which is very weird. So I guess that's what it is. Um, I probably should have put a location all the way in. Maybe I could have pinpointed where I want it to be, um, but I guess that's what you'd expect. I mean, what else could it do? All right, so let's navigate from right here to my house. I've never gone this way before. Let's just do it and see what happens. There is a Tesla supercharger station right there. So it's probably not uncommon for Teslas to have to get out of this. Why are we turning? Aren't we going straight? It says we're going straight. This is kind of the issues. So it's got its right blinker on, but it's going straight. I wouldn't say that that was perfect, but maybe that meant for this turn here up here. Hmm, interesting. Definitely a little slow too. And you can change how you go through intersections. They have the creep function. It's in the menu where you can go a little faster, a little slower. They have different modes for full self-drive, whether you want to have it be very aggressive with regards to its driving. Here we go. No, no sides. It's not going to know where. Let's look at this. It likes to just get as wide as possible. I just don't understand why it just doesn't stay along. Like there, you can see this line it's certain there. It's right there. Why doesn't it just stay the same distance from that line, you know? When a lane merges, got the green light. It's definitely a lot. Ooh, just kidding, no, nope, just kidding. It's definitely harder when there's oncoming traffic and other people, like, then it really gets confused. But when there's nobody oncoming, not too bad. All right, let's get through this intersection. Let's do it, you can do it. That's a nice black Tesla X right there. Apply light. Well, that's the thing. I'm, I'm in the middle of a turn and it wanted me to put my hands on the wheel during the middle of a turn to make sure I'm here, which makes me a little nervous because if it's turning on its own and I put my hands on it to give it some pressure, I feel like it may not turn. This could be scary here. Yeah, that was a little weird. It may not turn exactly how it wants to, or I may break autopilot. And then there it just accelerated very fast. So as we were coming around the corner, it kind of, it's going over the lines because it's accelerating so fast it can't stay in the lane. So I'd have to say we've had a couple instances where it's a little bit sketchy. Would that bother you? A little, but not too concerning. I mean, the only problem is if you do that and there's two lanes, let's say that there's a white line between and there's two cars, like what's to say you aren't going to hit that car next to you, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, now, really what I like on the, the full self-drive is it does turn on the blinkers in the city driving where it does not do that on enhanced autopilot, you actually have to, uh, you know, give it a confirmation that you're gonna turn. Now this should be interesting here. Here we go. We're gonna slowly enter the highway. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is gonna be interesting, trying to get over. Then I'm back in the highway here, so now I have to put on my own blinker or I have to at least confirm the lane change and we gotta do a double lane change here. And now it's accelerating a little bit fast and I'm not gonna be able to get out of this lane unless I brake. So there was an instance where it um, wasn't gonna work. It was gonna take me on the wrong highway if I didn't press the brake and get over myself or it would have slammed on the brakes right there. And then it just, you know, so it's not perfect. It did, did not know what to do there. Why would you accelerate past a car when you have to move over? You only have about you know, 200 meters to move over and it didn't do anything yet. And as I was saying before, on the city driving, it will lane change, but on the highway, you either have to confirm, sometimes it'll turn the blinker on and it'll move you over to exit or enter onto a highway or exit, exit off the highway. But when you're on the highway like this, if I engage back to the enhanced autopilot um, to change lanes, I actually have to just turn my blinker on and wait for it to be safe to change. So now I'm going into the left lane. Why are we going into the left lane? So that's one of my pet peeves is all the different lane changes in full self drive. We got off the highway. We may have to make sort of a U-turn for to a degree and it just got in the left lane and now it's just sitting here on the highway. I'm about to get yelled at. So I was supposed to go right there. All kinds of things we can talk about. All right, I'm pulled over because I'm mad. So we were coming down the highway. We needed to exit. When we exited, we were perfectly fine in the right lane to make the right turn. 
And in fact, we had to move over one more lane to make that right turn, or at least get past the traffic on our right, right? So I'm driving down in the right lane. It goes into the left lane. I don't have a choice. Just full self-drive into the left lane. 300 feet later, it needs to get back in the right lane. And now we're in trouble because it makes it in the right lane, but it has to go one more. And I just think that sometimes it just does things that are a little bit silly. Moving over to the left lane made no sense. Stay in the right lane. We're good. I didn't need to pass anybody. It wasn't like I was going slower than traffic. I didn't even have on changing lanes with regards to speed, which is a, a function in the menu here. If you go into the autopilot menu, you can go into customizing the autopilot. And here, speed-based lane change is actually on mild. Normally, I have that disabled because if I'm going to pass someone on the highway, I'll just do it myself by just turning on the blinker with the enhanced autopilot. I don't necessarily need it to figure out which lane it wants to be in constantly because even on average, it will sit there and bounce you around lane to lane to lane all the time. It's a little frustrating. They don't want you in the left lane because it'll say exit passing lane. It doesn't want you you know, in the right lane going slower. So it's kind of crazy to be going back and forth quite a bit. And really, I just prefer if I'm in one of the lanes, there's no traffic. If it's not the left lane, if it's the second to left, the right, whatever, I just want to stay in my lane and go straight until I actually need to make a change. So I have that on mild or disabled, but I don't think that was the point because we were going in a straight line. We needed to make a right. The right was coming up and full self-drive is notorious for getting in the right lane a little bit too early than I would, but that was definitely a mistake, which got me sitting here in traffic. And I'm surprised that the guy behind me didn't honk because we were sitting there standing still in the middle of the road. But let's continue here. Got it in drive, ready to go. And I'm going to immediately turn it right back on to full self-drive and let it take over and see what we can do. One of the most challenging things for full self-drive is to enter traffic. And it's just probably a very difficult thing to do for a car to get in there and be brave enough to just take off into traffic. So what you have a lot of the times is you're just kind of sitting in traffic and waiting. It's not very brave. Uh, there we go. Decided to go out. Nope. Decided not to. And that car even turned. So, I mean, here we go. We're just sitting here. There's actually no cars coming, and we're just sitting here. That car was in the other lane. The car that was in our lane was far enough behind that it thought it could do it, and then it decided it couldn't, but they turned right, and then it just sat there. So, as you can see, it, you know, I'm trying not to point out just the flaws. I mean, I think that the full self-drive is awesome. It's better than any other cars. I mean, I don't even know if any other car has a full self-drive. Um, but is it worth $15,000 when you can have the enhanced autopilot that takes care of you on the highway? It's no different than the full self-drive on the highway. And in fact, when the full self-drive fails on the highway because of weather or something like that, the autopilot still works and the enhanced autopilot still works. This is going around this corner pretty fast. How you liking the ride now, Eric? A little bumpier than last time, huh? Yeah, that was a little sketchy. It's a little bit sketchier than when we drove over to uh, Jersey Mike's. He thought it was fantastic because it was basically a straight line, stopped at the stoplights, you know, went when it was green, but it's a little bit sketchier when you get into some of these traffic conditions and when you're, you know, just Jesus take the wheel, man. But back to what I was saying, full self-drive isn't perfect, but it is a beta and I understand that. But how many years can it be beta for? And is it worth paying 15,000 for when it's still something that is probably similar to a new driver, a student driver. And to be honest, a lot of student drivers are probably better drivers than this car, uh, you know, but you do get the safety features. I have not hit anyone on full self-drive. Now, some of those things that I showed you are a little sketchy. And if there was a car closer, maybe it would have accelerating around a corner when you probably should just coast, things like that. But I don't think it's for me because I get everything that I need in the enhanced autopilot. Really, the only thing that I was lacking from the regular autopilot was changing lanes. And now that you can just click on the directional stock to go left or right a lane without having to adjust the actual steering wheel, without having to break out of the autopilot, without having to stop your cruise control, it's all fantastic. So the enhanced autopilot at $6,000, if I was buying a new Tesla, I would absolutely just roll that right into my loan. And I just think that I would take a pass on the full self-drive for now until it becomes something that there are just no questions about it, until it can actually drive like a human. But since we did not purchase the full self-drive or the enhanced autopilot with this car, I'm actually paying about 200 bucks a month to get the full self-drive. And for me, that would take me like three years to pay off just the enhanced autopilot at the $200 a month. So it's not actually a big deal for me to get all of the full self-drive because I get it for $200 a month 
And it, now that it's available for anyone that passes with regards to having a score high enough as a safe driver with regards to Tesla and how they feel about it, I think that's just a good middle point. You get everything on the highway, you can change lanes, it ends at the highway and tells you that autopilot or enhanced autopilot is ending in 400 meters off of the highway. And then you just drive in the city yourself because I think it's safer, you'll feel more comfortable, you won't be so nervous. But again, since I have all of it for $200 a month, which would take me like, what, seven years to pay off the full 15,000 for full self-drive, it's not a big deal for me just to pay $200 a month as I test this a little bit more. I'm gonna switch lanes here, get over, See how easy that is with just the enhanced autopilot? So let me know what you guys think. Would you get just the autopilot that comes with the car where you can just get cruise control, stay in your lane? Would you get the enhanced autopilot that's $6,000 that I think is the best because now you can lane change, you know, five, six hour drive to a different location, very easy. And all you have to do is just change lanes by touching the blinker and everything else is pretty safe. Or would you, or have you gone full self drive and pay the 15,000 and just get the whole ball of wax? Let me know in the comments. And if you have full self-drive or enhanced autopilot, tell me what you really like about it or where I'm wrong. Because I'm not an expert in all this. I just had this long enough that I feel pretty comfortable. I've always used cruise control. I really like the autopilot and the enhanced autopilot, but I just don't think that the full self-drive is where it needs to be for the cost of $15,000 when I don't think that I would use it on a regular basis in the city. So hope you liked the video. Smash the like button, subscribe. Got a lot more videos like this. See you on the next one.